Hi, and welcome to Mom's Den. My name is Ivona, and today I'll be helping you not wipe your LFR or normal raid group on the Hungering Destroyer. A deceptively complicated, but in reality super simple boss with very few mechanics. Also, this is a super simple guide oriented mostly towards DPS, so if you're a healer, tank, or an advanced player, you may want to get some additional information on heroic and mythic tactics if you're into that. Before we dive deeper into the strategy, make sure to press that sub button. I publish a bunch of simple WoW guides every other day and help a lot of people get super easy wins in WoW, and I sure hope you'll join them. Now, when when it comes to Hungering Destroyer, if you've ever seen the fight, you probably notice people getting divided into a lot of smaller groups, and there's a good reason for that. In the beginning, there will be a few players who get hit with a damage debuff called Gluttonous Miasma. They won't be able to get healed directly, but can leech the health from surrounding players, and that's why it's super important to be stacked with all the players who have the whitish circle around them. However, don't have more than 5 players stacked in the same group since you'll get your healers in trouble for no good reason. On the other hand, there's Expunge, another debuff that you'll notice by having a blue circle around you. The more health you have, the smaller the circle it is, and it's important to get the circle away from the other players so the other ones don't receive damage. Make sure to not get it mixed up with the white circle, and if you've got the blue one around you, do not stay in the stacking group since you'll make your healer's life a lot harder. If you're in a melee group, you want to be aware of growing hunger. Whenever the boss hits one of the melee players, he takes the health away from them and essentially gets healed. This is actually super stackable by 8% per stack, so it's super important for the tanks to mitigate the damage and stop the boss from living forever. Another big damage source for the tanks is Overwhelm, and in order to survive, they should be making sure to save some sort of defensive cooldown for it. What's important for the whole group is the boss casting Desolate. This is unavoidable, and it's pretty much up to the healers to keep the raid group alive. What you can control is how it's going to play out when you're targeted with Volatile Ejection, and that's a huge blue line pointing towards you. It is very important to not stand between the boss and the marked player since the spell stops only when it hits the wall, so be wary of that, especially if you're in the melee group. Finally, the most obvious spell for the whole raid is going to be Consume, which will make the boss draw players towards him and make a great amount of health from the players, so stand as far away from him as you can if you want to be less affected, which I'm sure you do. All of this sounds like there's a lot of stuff to do, but if you're in the raid for the first time or you don't have a habit of noticing a bunch of things around you, the essence is this. If you have a white circle around you, stack with other players. If you've got a blue one, move away from everyone. When the boss tries to suck you in, get as far away from him as possible, and if you've got a line pointing towards you, make sure there's nobody crossing it. As a DPS, that is pretty much all you need to worry about. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this guide useful. Let me know if you've got some other strategies for this boss, and if you don't want to wipe your raid on other bosses as well, make sure to sub to my channel since more guides are coming real soon. Good luck in Castle Nathria, and I'll see you on the next boss. Bye-bye.